Hey YouTube, I'm going to be doing my question and answer video on hair bows and tutus and that different kinds of stuff. I got, I think about 40 questions or more, probably more. Um, so yeah, if I don't answer your question, it's probably because um, I didn't understand it. Or the questions that I'm not going to answer are questions like people who ask if I can make a tutorial on this or that or whatever. I'm not going to be answering those questions. I'm just answering questions on... Um, like the way like the way I don't know how to say it. uh questions about hair bows and stuff like that that you guys might have like you know that type of stuff um so let me just get started with the questions the first question is what is the best way to line alligator clips to suit all ages I line my alligator clips based on what the customer wants I can do the fully lined I can do the partially lined I'll do um, French brits and or headbands or whatever whatever the the customer wants, um, but for the alligator clips, most of my customers, like probably 99% of the time, my customers want the partially lined alligator clip with the gripper, which is this, that clip right there. It's the ribbon is not wrapping the entire clip, so um, yeah. And on the inside, I don't know if you can see, probably can't see, but I put a I put a gripper on the inside. Let me see. Excuse my mess on my desk. I don't know if you can see all that mess. But anyway, that foamy looking thing inside there, that's a gripper. It grips the hair. And this is a double prong alligator clip, which I get I get them at Sally's or I get them on eBay. So yeah, that's the that's the kind and it works for all ages. Like if your child has thicker hair or if your customer child has thicker hair, I usually t like well if they have the question on how to put it in their hair, like you just you don't grab a big chunk of hair to clip it on with the alligator clip. You just grab it, like, just, just a little bit. Like, if their hair is in a ponytail and you want to clip it on, just clip it on a little bit of hair. You don't need to clip it on, you know, the entire ponytail or whatever. Um, so, yeah, and the same with, like, a child that has thin hair, you know, you don't need to grip it on, or clip it on a whole bunch of hair. But whatever, whatever works best for you. They also asked me how I price my bows. Um, and they said that I don't know whether to do it inch by inch or based on hourly. I do mine inch by inch. Um, I do mine a dollar per inch, and um, if it's like a stacked bow, I do I add another dollar per layer. Um, so yeah, like on the boutique stacked bow, um, this is a five inch bow, which is all messed up because I started squishing it. Uh, I need to fix it. Anyway. Um, the boutique, the boutique stacked bow, I usually, since it's five inches, I, I usually start it out at five dollars. But since it's layered, I add another dollar, which is six dollars. And then to add all the little knickknacks, like the bottle cap, the bottle cap, or the little mini side bows, or the diamonds, or the, the feather boa, um, I add another dollar for, for those as well. Not each. I get that question a lot. I don't add a dollar for the bottle cap, a dollar for the side bows, a dollar for the di No. I add a dollar for one or all four, like whatever. Um, if you just want the bottle cap, it's a dollar. But if you want the bottle cap and the side bows, it's a dollar. Or if you want, you know, all four of them, it, it's a dollar. Like, I just add a dollar for everything. Um, so my, the five inch boutique stack bows usually come out to seven dollars. So, yeah. Oh, I'm out of breath. Um, so yeah, that was the first question. The second question is, not sure how to ask this, but when you do the center bow with all the loops, how do you get the it the way how do you get it to look the way you do? I think this person's talking about the, the top bow right here. The the oh my gosh. The pink bow that's right here on the top. Um I have a tutorial on how I make those bows, um, and how to make them loopy, because I get that question a lot as well. Um I think it's called how to make your bows more loopy or something like that. But I have a tutorial on that. You just have to twist the loops a lot more. You just have to twist them. Because um, if, you do, if you don't twist them as much, they're going to come out flat. Um, and also, I, when you're done with the, when you're done sewing the bow together or whatever, fluff it up. Like, you know, fix the loops to make them look the way you, you want them to look. So, but again, it takes practice. It does take practice. It's not, you're not going to get it the first 10, 20, 30 tries. Um, maybe you will. I'm not sure, but um, I know it took me an entire year to get to get my bows the way I like them, um, to get my bows to my perfection. So, uh, and even now, I still practice. I still like um, 
I've been making bows for over five years, and I still, I still practice. And I know mine never come out, like mine still don't come out 100%. Um, most of the time, like I'll just redo it. Like if it doesn't come out the way I like it, I'll just take it apart and just redo it again. Um, so, but yeah, just, just it just takes practice. That's all I'm gonna tell you. It just takes practice. And then just the, it goes on to the next question. Um, how do you get your accordion fold to look so good? I want to make a tutorial on this, so um, you know you can look out for that. I'm gonna do like I know in all my videos I actually show how I do the accordion fold, but I want to do like a more detailed like close up of the accordion fold in, in a tutorial. But again, it takes practice. It's not, you know, some people, if you want to practice on the accordion fold, try not to use ribbon that's like slippery, like the satin ribbon or the, the silk ribbon or like any slippery ribbon. Like if, if you want to practice on the accordion fold, practice on the, gro the gross grain ribbon, which is the ribbon, sorry, let me get all close. The ribbon that has the ridges, and you can see the ridges. So yeah, that's the gross grain ribbon. Practice on that. And practice on like a thicker kind of ribbon. Not a ribbon that's super thin or slippery. Um, so yeah, just practice on, just practice the accordion fold on the, the gross grain ribbon. And just keep practicing. That's what I'm going to tell you. Just keep practicing. Um, here's another one. Any tips for making tutus for bigger kids? I tried making one for an 8 to 9 year old and it just didn't look as full and as cute as the smaller short ones. If you're going to be making a bigger tutu, um, you're going to need to use a lot more tool if you want it to come out very fluffy. Or just make the, the tool shorter um, instead of making it so long. Because I know the longer you make it, the less poofy and fluffy it's going to come out to be. So um, if you want it to be long but fluffy, use a lot more tool. Just just add more tool. Um, but if you want... If you don't want to add more tool, but you still want it to be fluffy, then just make the tutu shorter. Um, so that's my tip for that. Um, have, yeah. Let me see. This person asked, will you do more bow tutorials? Yes, I will. Um, as you guys know, my house was broken into and everything, and we had just moved in, and I was going to get my crafting mall set up, and I was going to start doing tutorials again, but they broke in, they took my laptop, they took my camera, my photography camera, the one that I used to, to film stuff. We have another camera, but um, it doesn't. Like I, I have to like learn it all, like learn it all over again, and, and like I can't upload it. I can't put the the videos on the hard drive hard drive of my computer, which means I can't use any editing software or whatever. So, um, it comes with an editing software, but you know you can't. It's not that great, so I'm gonna buy a new camera. Um, pretty soon that way I can start doing tutorials because right now I'm filming stuff on my phone but I have to hold my phone I don't have a tripod for my phone or anything like that so I have to hold my phone so um, like the other day I actually tried uh, filming myself showing how to, how I put uh, little leaves on a tutu that I had made which the pictures on my Facebook fan page the links down below to my Facebook fan page by the way um, and I couldn't do it with my phone I, I needed both my hands and like I was holding my phone and I had to keep putting my phone down and stuff like that just to just to you know do stuff or whatever and it was just a pain. So once I get my camera, then I'll yes, of course I'll start doing tutorials again. Um, here's another question: How do you add ribbon to the bottom of the tutus? I I heard you sew them on. If so, how do you sew them on? And could it be possible to just glue them on? And what what width of ribbon did you use? I think she's talking about the princess style tutu that I had made. It was like a black and lime green tutu that I had made. Um, yes, you have to sew those on. If you glue them on, most likely it'll be easy for the child just to rip it off. Um, so, and I use, the, the size of the ribbon that I used is 1.5 inch, 1.5 inches. And yes, you do sew them on. Um, but that style of ribbon Oh, that style, that style of tutu, I used 13 yards of tool, but like the constant, uh, the tool, like the, the fabric tool, I guess you can say, the, I guess that's what they call it, I'm not sure. Not the tool that comes on the, the spools, but it's the tool that comes on, the, like, like sheets of fabric, like, you know, like the, the, I think it's like three yards or like the, I don't know how to describe it. It comes on those, those wood boards or whatever that you can get at Hobby Lobby and stuff like that. Not the not the little spools. 
but I used 13 yards of that and um, I guess I'll put the link down below of where I got the the pattern for that tutu so yeah um, I bought the the tutorial on that because there, there's not one on on YouTube so I guess I'm gonna stop this video right now and then I'll upload part two